In the last part of this series, we finished up talking about Sean Raymond's thought experiment that put one million Earth-like worlds in orbit around a supermassive black hole. And suffice it to say, if you're new to the channel and you haven't checked out the previous videos in this series, be sure to check them out. We also tackled the first images of a sun-like star being gobbled up by a black hole, as well as how astronomers may one day be able to detect the leftover gravitational waves from the formation of primordial Earth-mass black holes. Today, after many demands that I jump on this third part sooner rather than later, we're going to be diving into supermassive black hole collisions, why the fabled Planet Nine might be a primordial black hole, and why scientists are scrambling to find a pulsar around a black hole. But first, be sure to hit that like button, comment what you think you'd see after entering the event horizon of a black hole, my money's on Azathoth, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachi, author of Mind's Horizon, and this is Science Get. Back in June of the year no one wants to remember, Caltech announced that they detected the gravitational waves associated with the collision between two black holes. But detected isn't exactly the right word for it as astronomers actually think they observed the event with their own eyes. Now, I know what you're saying, but Eric, how is that possible? Well, the team behind the announcement said that their observation was made possible by a third black hole involved in the collision. This collision is reported to have happened at least 4 billion light years from Earth. Moments before the impact, two smaller black holes each 150 times the mass of our sun, passed into the larger one's accretion disk, one that is thought to be 100 million times more massive than our sun, with a diameter the size of the orbit of the frickin' Earth. And when they finally merged, moving at a calculated rate of 700,000 kilometers per hour, an immense flash of light, one trillion times brighter than the sun, resulted. Violent reactions like this are not uncommon in black hole mergers. Take the Bird Galaxy, for example. This thing is an absolute monster. As if you couldn't tell by this terrifying image. This object was originally thought to be the collision between a spiral bar and a regular galaxy. But upon closer examination, it was revealed that there was a third galaxy taking part in the merger. Not only that, but the new stars were bursting to life at an alarming rate. Supermassive black hole collisions like this are a rare sight, but they're a common aspect of stellar life in our universe. It's a violent process because while it's unlikely that any of the stars in these three galaxies will ever collide thanks to the extreme distances involved, the orbits of most of the objects are being disturbed on a massive level as these supermassive black holes prepare to merge. This violence also increases the chances of a star or two falling into one of the black holes, causing them to erupt with relativistic jets. We all remember how devastating those can be. If such a quasar is created during this collision, then it's possible that the galaxies could prematurely age to the point that once the merger is finished, all of the young stars could explode as a violent supernovae leaving only long-lived red stars like red dwarfs, red giants, and red supergiants. Supermassive black hole collisions also cause gravitational waves that can be felt across the universe, which is one of the main reasons why we even know about these intense, rare events. And while not much is known about what the effects of said gravitational waves might be up close, if we can detect them from hundreds of millions of light years away, then it's my speculation, yeah, that, that you might not want to be anywhere close to one of these events, like not even within the same galaxy. But while supermassive black hole mergers are huge, terrifying events, they're pretty far away. Except for the one that's going to happen about a billion years from now when the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxy crash into each other. It's possible that there's a black hole closer to home than we ever thought possible. Since the discovery of Neptune, 
Disturbances in the orbits of the outer planets, as well as the asteroids and comets in the solar system, have suggested to scientists the possibility that there might be another planet lying far beyond the reach of the ice giants. And no, the discovery of the Pluto system did not solve this issue. Most recently, it's been suggested that the mysterious object beyond Pluto and Charon might be a super-Earth a type of exoplanet we've observed in many other alien systems, but is strangely absent from our own. While there are some theories that work to explain how it is we don't have a hot Jupiter or a super-Earth or two of our own, we're not going to talk about those this time. Astronomers are now starting to consider a wild concept, that the planet they've been searching for in the Kuiper Belt could actually be a softball-sized primordial black hole. Yeah, I know, wouldn't that be awesome? Sure, it would be awesome if it turned out to be true, but how would this even be possible? Primordial black holes are thought to have been made during the formation of the universe, the Big Bang, 13.5 billion years ago. Well, if the primordial black hole in question were five masses larger than the Earth, and it managed to remain dormant throughout our recent history, at the very least, then it would theoretically be possible. But that's a big if. I mean, primordial black holes haven't even been observed yet, right? The Optical Gravitational Lensing Experiment, or OGL, Ogle? 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 Yeah, we'll run with that one. Monitored the skies for gravitational micro-lensing events. These events occur when a large object, you know, like a black hole, eclipses another object. This refracts the light of the eclipse object around the black hole as you can see in the image right next to me. After five years, Ogle had observed not one or two, but six microlensing events, suggesting that the probability that Planet Nine is actually a primordial black hole is at least equal to the possibility that it's a planet. But there is one thing about black holes that astronomers have been combing the skies in search of, and it's something that remains further out of reach than even the elusive Planet Nine. Pulsars are some of the most terrifying objects in the known universe, and it shouldn't surprise you either, considering they're yet another type of neutron star. And, you know, neutron stars are scary enough on their own. The thing that separates these things from an ordinary neutron star, as if a neutron star could ever be considered ordinary in the first place, is that they emit beams of light from their poles and spin at a ridiculous speed sometimes equaling 600 rotations per second. Oh, and they emit powerful gamma rays too, like nightmarish lighthouses of death. Hey, yeah, that's not too bad. These nightmarish lighthouses of doom can cook any life-bearing planet that just so happens to orbit too close to them to a crisp. And for some reason, astronomers are hoping to find one orbiting a black hole, as if we needed more reasons not to sleep at night. But there's one property of pulsars that we haven't really touched on yet and it's their incredible precision when it comes to time. The rate at which we observe the beam of light of a spinning pulsar, the pulse, if you will, is so precise that scientists use pulsars and white dwarfs to test Einstein's general theory of relativity with great precision. However, if they were able to find a pulsar orbiting a black hole, then they would be able to test general relativity in its most extreme circumstances, and with the most accurate kind of precision. But it's not hyperbole to say that finding such an event would be like looking for the Holy Grail, mainly because, you know, we haven't found one yet. Enough said, end of video, see you next time. Be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, and hold on. You didn't think that was actually the end of the video, did you? While no pulsars have actually been found around a stellar mass black hole, yet, what has been discovered is a pulsar orbiting close to the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. SYNC announced that the pulsar named SGR J1745-2900 was found orbiting close to Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole. And sure, this isn't what astronomers were hoping to find, and the hunt is still on, but what this does show is that it is definitely possible. Rare, sure, but possible. After all, it was only within the last decade that we got our first look at both a kilonova in action as well as the birth of a potential magnetar. 
What's more is that such a discovery could unlock the secrets of quantum gravity and unite general relativity with quantum mechanics. And when they do find one of these things, you can rest assured that we'll be watching for the announcement, as it could change everything. If you dug this video, be sure to drop a like and comment what you think Planet Nine is. Is it a primordial black hole? or a super earth. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Get. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.